family back home. Here, they will wrap up the 2015 season. And tonight, Chris Tillman will take the mound in game one against Toronto. They have handled him roughly. Tillman will try and respond tonight. the Orioles on Bassett and back home they come. Birdland is the site as the Orioles have another week of regular season to play and all of them will be at home including four against Toronto. Hi everybody I'm Gary Thorne and welcome for the Orioles a road trip that started out so well ended up in Boston with a team unable to get runs in the final three games that were played on that trip all at Fenway Park. They'll try and get that offense going again here tonight against the highly offensive Toronto Blue Jays. So with a road record now in the rearview mirror. Let's take a look. The comparison 2014-2015 for the Orioles on the road. It hurt them this year. You see the wins down by 12. The runs per game down significantly. The batting average on the road. The starter ERA up. The only number that is positive when compared to last year is the number of the bullpen ERA. But that's not going to do it. So the Orioles ended up 34 and 50 on the road. And uh, those losses, Mike, when you look back on a season, those road losses really mattered. Oh, they sure did. I mean, if you want to make it to the promised land, you better play well on the road, also within your division. But the Orioles have struggled this year. Last year, you saw the impressive numbers that they put together. Uh, an incredible road record, playing very well at home as well. This year, they just could not get it going. It's just part of that roller coaster ride the Orioles have been on. And unfortunately, the starting pitching has been a problem all year. You saw the numbers last year very consistent all the way through, especially the second half of the season. This year, the starting rotation has never been able to get back on track, and, and it's unfortunate. The Orioles' offense, you know, I think they may have to look back at their philosophy a little bit. You love the fact that they had home runs, but back-to-back -back years, they've been middle of the pack and runs scored at the end of the year. This team is supposed to be a run-producing team. They're not able to get on base. They don't draw walks. They're always at the bottom of the league in yep. walks and on-base percentage, so uh, that's something they really have to reflect on. And, you know, Dan Duquette, when he came aboard, he said, listen, it's a power-hitting team. We need to get on base more, and more runs will be scored. Well, it hasn't happened again this year, and it could certainly overshadow some of the pitching problems. Problems. And uh, Billy Bean may come into play with the old money ball because that's what they used to talk about was on base percentage. And while that certainly isn't a cure all, it is something the Orioles have got to look at in the offseason. Back home, though, can the offense get going? Score some runs. Blue Jays and the Orioles coming up.
National Anthem with the Heart of Maryland Chorus here at Camden Yards as the final week of the regular season begins. Orioles baseball on Masson brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com and by Coons.com. When you're talking cards, you're talking Coons. Let's take a look at our BGE home game time temperature. We are at 75 degrees, a little light rain. Passed by within the past hour. Not much of a breeze here. BGE Home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Here's the starting lineup tonight for the number one Blue Jays. Revere, Donaldson, and Bautista are in Canacion. Calabello, Navarro, Pilar, Goings, and Kawasaki. Josh Donaldson, MVP. Well, there's one number that gives him a plus. Right, let's take a look at Chris Tillman's pitch arsenal this season. The fastball 65% of the time. He's been driving it downhill much better here recently. Had a real good start in his last one against the Washington Nationals. The breaking ball has a big curve and the slider 21% of the time. And the straight change at 14%. Ten wins on the season, uh, three straight years for Tillman to reach that mark. He'd love to pick up his 11th, 5.16 earned run average, 112 punch outs this season. Opponents hitting 268 overall. And he's given up the 19 home runs, nine of those coming to this Blue Jays team. If Chris Tillman wants to have success against the Blue Jays, he better have command of all of his pitches, and Matt Weeders better be mixing them up along the way to keep this team off balance. What a time uh, Tillman has had with this Toronto ball club. Uh, five starts, 0 and 4, an ERA of 15 and a half. They've hit 407 against him and an 826 slugging percentage. Just unbelievable offensive numbers that one ball club would have against one pitcher. Yeah, r really. Uh... Uh, tremendous offensive output against Tillman and unfortunate for Chris Tillman. But the good news is he did have a pretty good start here back on May. Uh, I don't know, middle of May, six and two thirds against this Blue Jays team. And it wasn't until the seventh inning that they finally pushed some runs across the plate on. Him. This is one of those games where there is no reason the Orioles should win. Therefore, expect an Orioles W. <laughs> All of the numbers coming into this game are not in the Orioles favor. Pitch is taken for a strike. Revere leading it off. Tillman gets it in. It is important for him in these first pitch strikes to get those. John Gibbons ball club 90 wins, 65 losses, four game lead over the Yankees, looking for the division title. That'll go to center field. Power is playing center, and he's got it. Well, let's take a look at the Orioles defense. Uh, some struggles defensively up in Fenway Park. Looking to turn it around here. Pierce, Hara, and Flaherty in the Orioles outfield. Hardy and Scope up the middle. Machado and Davis on the corners. And Matt Weeders will do the catching tonight. Para making his fourth start in center field. Talking about uh, potential MVP, Josh Donaldson certainly is that. He stands in with just a multitude of amazing numbers on the season. He led them uh, to a win yesterday with a walk off home run. So the Jays are now 25 games above 500 for the first time since 1993. And that comeback win, walk off win, reduced that number, magic number to four. One thing the Orioles do not want to have happen with either Toronto or the Yankees is a celebration here of anything. And it could come as early as tomorrow night for Toronto. As that magic number with the Yankees playing could be had within that time if Toronto was to win two 
against the Orioles and the Yankees were to lose two in as many nights and that the Orioles don't want to see happen. Yeah, well the Orioles have played very well here at their home park. They're uh, three and three against the Blue Jays here at home. They'd like to finish the season strong ultimately now get back up over 500. That'll go to short Hardy on the big hop. We'll make the throw and Donaldson is retired. Let's take a look at our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Yeah, take a look at the Blue Jays uh, versing the Blue Jays this season. And in Toronto, three and six, not too good. At home, 500, though, three and three. But the offense has been there. 5.7 runs in Toronto, 5.3 here at home. They're hitting their home runs, of course, uh, but the pitching. You better be able to shut this offense down. 6.84 up in Toronto, 5.17 here at home. Tillman's got to be on his game and hope this offense can get back on track after getting shut down up in Boston over the weekend. Five speed delivery to Bautista. Bautista, 278 average, three home runs lifetime against Tillman. He's looking for his 40th home run of the season. Shift on in the infield. Another off speed delivery. That one is going to miss up high. Joe West, the veteran home plate umpire, uh, is working tonight. He has been uh, in his long and great career. Uh, strike zone that favors the hitters most of the time. Pitchers have to work for K's. That pitch will be fouled off into the seats. Country Joe West, who has put out a number of CDs of country songs. Yeah, and he's uh, pretty good at the staring contest, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you got to see that highlight of him and Bumgarner going at it, just locking eyes. One, two, delivery to Bautista, and the pitch will be taken up high. Bautista this season is at 372 against the Orioles. He has five home runs and 17 RBIs this year against the Orioles. 2 2 delivery, a little check swing. Tillman, he's got it. And that's a big first inning. Chris gets out of it, setting all three down. He had given up 13 runs in the first inning coming in, none in this one. First inning, and yes, it is great. Let's take a look at the O's starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Para Machado and Davis, Pierce Clevenger and Weeder, Scope, Flaherty, and Hardy. For Manny this month, there are the numbers in September. And here's a look at Marco Estrada's pitch arsenal this season. The fastball 61% of the time, 88 to 91 with the heater, so not overpowering at all. And mix in a curveball for the breaking ball 11% of the time, but it's his changeup, is his bread and butter pitch 28% of the time. Great uh, differential in velocity off his fastball, his go to pitch. He's made 26 starts in 32 games. Believe it or not, not in the rotation at the beginning of the year, was working out of the pen and still. 13 wins with a 3 1 3 earned run average holding opponents to just a 2 0 8 overall average but he is a fly ball pitcher pronounced 67 percent of his outs in the air so he's susceptible to the long ball 21 homers this year power is in the leadoff spot and in center field and the pitch to him will be taken down low. Adam Jones not playing came out uh, played the ball game yesterday and uh, just did not feel a 
well enough as far as Buck Showalter was concerned with that back problem to be back in the lineup for the ball game tonight. He is available. Pitch will be taken on the inside corner for a strike. And already the Orioles have done something they didn't do in three games in Boston. They've actually taken a pitch. <laughs> the Orioles were swinging at everything that the soft tossing left handers were throwing at them at Fenway Park. 1 1 delivery on the way and a ground ball down to first. Yeah, they, uh, they struggled offensively up there. They only hit 129 in that three game series and scattered 12 hits. In the three games, it was uh, kind of a shock, I think, to everybody because they're riding a wave of momentum after sweep, sweeping the Nationals. You know, the Red Sox, of course, have had struggles all year long, and to go up there and get swept uh, really took the wind out of this team's sails. That'll go to left field, Ben Revere. He'll put it away and one down. Buck Showalter had some comments on what we were talking about. Buck? We're still in a playoff hunt here. Okay, regardless of what someone else may think, and um, Adam wants no part of that right now. But I know what you're saying, and that's why I have used caution with him a lot in the last week, and will continue to. But I'm not going to throw that uh, mentality out there yet. And the question was, is it better for the organization for Adam to come out of the lineup right now and just not chance it? And that was Buck's response to that. And the Orioles have not officially been eliminated. They are on the verge of having that happen. In fact, it could happen uh, tonight. Manny Machado. Machado one for six with a home run off Estrada and the pitch will be taken outside for a ball. If the Orioles lose and the Astros win in Seattle, the Orioles are officially eliminated from the postseason. That's tonight. One ball, one strike delivery. Machado on the off-speed pitch pops it up. Shallow center. Kawasaki going back. And we'll put it away. We'll take a look at the Blue Jays defense tonight. Revere, Pilar, and Batista. And in the Jays outfield, Goins making the start at shortstop with Tulowitzki still down. Kawasaki playing second. Donaldson over at third. And Colabello getting the start at first base with the veteran backstop Navarro doing the catching. And with that, Chris Davis will come up against Estrada like Machado. He is also one for six. With a home run in his career. Shift is on. And the pitch will be taken away for a ball. With all of the numbers Toronto has put up this season, what amazes me the most, they have, as pitchers, walked the fewest hitters in the league. And as hitters, have picked up the most walks. I find that an extraordinary combination. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, I think when you have a quality defense behind you, the pitcher's uh, obviously going to be aggressive in the zone. Now, this staff has gone through, you know, some work. The first half, they weren't quite as good. I think when David Peer or Price came along, everybody settled in. They all uh, automatically got the confidence, but they have some veteran arms. Ari Dickey, of course, Burley, of course, another one of those years uh, where he makes it through, eats up innings. And there, how about that? Chris Davis, one of the leaders in free passes, gets one with two down here in the first inning. Let's see if the Orioles can take advantage of it. For Chris, he's in the uh, top ten in walks as he's been all year long. Coming into the game, Bautista actually leads the league, and Chris is ranked fifth. That's his 78th walk of the year. That'll bring up Steve Pierce. Steve in the midst of uh, an 0 for 10 coming into the ball game. Two down. They play him to pull in the infield and the pitch at the knees for a strike. We'll take a look at Marco Estrada. The opponent average uh, by pitch type. The fastball just 203. He's able to move it around the perimeter, work it to the top of the zone. The curve 241, but the changeup just 191. His primary put away pitch and his go to when he gets ahead. 0 1 count. Pierce will go after it, headed to short. Goins has got it, and will record the out. So the Orioles will tack on another inning where they have not scored a run as they are retired with a base runner left on. No score.
including the first inning of this ball game. This season, the longest scoreless inning streak belongs to the Dodgers at 35, then the Yankees, White Sox, and Reds. Now, just for fun, we thought we'd look and see what is the longest in Major League history. Going back to 1912, it's the 68 Chicago Cubs who went 48 innings without scoring a run. The 31 Reds, the 1913 St. Louis Browns, and the 66 Astros at 43. Those are the all-time marks since 1912. And the wow. Orioles will bring, get out of that. That's a lot of innings. 48 sure a without week's, a run. A week's worth of game. It right is there. there. Holy cow. Whoa. Here's Arcanacio on their DH. A couple of home runs off Tillman in his career. Had another one. That ball's just out of here. Way back in left field, and goodbye home run. All right, Canacion delivers the long ball. And this team that is first in about everything in offense adds another. Amazing 223 home runs for the team. His 36th. Well, Encarnacion, very dangerous. So how do you make it through the heart of this order? Donaldson, Batista, and then you got to face Encarnacion, who just picked up his 36th homer on a high fastball from Tillman. So the 20th surrendered by the Orioles starter this season. 17 of those have been hit by right handers. Here is Colabello, and he will foul that one away. These two teams have had a highly offensive season series. That will be the 95th run scored by Toronto against the Orioles. The Orioles have scored 83 against Toronto. That is the 20th home run hit by the Blue Jays against the Orioles. The Orioles have hit 22 against them. In fact, the numbers are extraordinary. Toronto's hitting 294 against the Orioles. The Orioles are hitting 260 against the Jays. Chris Colabello at the plate. He is two for five off Tillman. Soren Canacion launches one leading off the second inning. 0 2 count. Tillman's delivery to him. Somehow got a piece of that and fouled a bag. Nice fastball right there. Very offensive. This is what we're talking about. The Blue Jays and their American League rankings 267. That's third in the American League, but first in runs per game, home runs, on base percentage, and walks. And of course, we talk about the big three Donaldson, Batista, and Encarnacion. Batista, 105 walks. Encarnacion, 73. Donaldson, 71. So they will take their walks. They're patient. And when they get a cookie, they do some damage. Pitch is taken away. Colabello with a one ball, two strike count from Chris Tillman. Chris, lifetime four and ten against this Toronto team. One two delivery on the way, and that one is going to catch the inside corner. And Tillman gets the strikeout for the first out of the inning. Nice change up right there from Chris Tillman. This pitch has come a long way for Tilly here. Uh, a couple of the outs in the first inning off the change up and here a strikeout to get Colabello looking. For Tillman here at home this year 15th start he's five and six ERA is five. Here at Camden Yards this season. Compare that on the road it's a. Third higher ERA 5.33 on the road. Navarro will take the off speed delivery it is in there for a strike. Navarro all of a sudden uh, not only doing some catching but he's doing some hitting he's got a seven game hit streak raising his average up to 248 fastball there for his strike he's gone 11 for 29 during the streak and over an even longer span last 19 ball games hitting 297. Listen, this team's confidence is sky high right now they have had an incredible second half with the. Uh, the help of a couple of their additions to Lewitsky and David Price, of course, some help in the bullpen with Lowe. Estrada's had an incredible year. They're fired up in Toronto right now. They're just uh, working on sellouts, and the crowd has just, uh, you know, inspired this team. I mean, they feel like they're playing for a whole country, and they are. They the are. The only team in Canada right now, and uh, every player right now is feeling that confidence as they try to get the uh, best record 
in the American League for that home field advantage. One ball, two strike count since the All Star break. They've gone 45 and 19. It's the best mark in the major leagues. And the highest mark in club history. That ball, a towering fly ball to right center. Flaherty, Para. Para will call for it. And Navarro is retired. There are two down. You see the race for the best record, Mike, you were talking about. I mean, they, they're right there. Yeah, but back, uh, you know, August 31st, 74 and 57, they're six and a half games back of the Royals for that best record, but they have just caught fire. I'm going to tie them. The Royals with 90 wins on the season. You mentioned that 45 and 19, you know, since the uh, All Star break, but 16 and 8 here this month. So they've continued the consistent baseball. And like I said, they're riding a wave of confidence right now, one through nine offensively, and the pitchers have all stepped up as well. Here is Kevin Pillar, their center fielder. Five for 13 against Tillman. Three of his five hits have been home runs. He too has got a hit streak going of five games. A run in here in the second on the Arcanacion homer. As you would expect when you look at the offensive numbers in the American League, I mean, names from these two teams all over the place among the leaderboards. That one goes to right, it'll fall in. Flaherty's got a chase. He'll hold the runner at first, and it'll be a single. And Pilar's got a six game hit streak on with two down. As part of the Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, the Orioles have partnered with Maryland Governor Larry Hogan to raise funds, and you can contribute. The Orioles have done so with a $50,000 check. You can donate at Orioles.com slash charity and take 50% off ticket prices for the remaining games in this Blue Jays series. Orioles.com slash charity. Goings up with Tulowitzki out. Goings is playing at short. He's at 324 against the Orioles this year. Runner on two down. Yeah, quite a breakout season offensively uh, for Goings. Always known as a great defender and some people say they're they're comparing him to Robbie Alomar up there when he mm. plays second base. Uh, incredible defensive player actually signed as a shortstop on Texas Christian University and moved over. To second base, but uh, can play all the infield positions. I'm sure he'll settle back in the second when Tulowitzki comes back. Tulowitzki was on the field today and took batting practice for the first time since the injury. Trouble was, he only got four swings and it started to rain, and they put the tarp out and he had to leave. They expect to play him, John uh, said, their skipper, defensively in this series. They want to get him in, not necessarily to hit, but to play in the field and then. Working back into a lineup, getting back at the plate, but he needs some more batting practice before they want him in a game situation at the plate. That is great news for them because Tulowitzki, as much as they talk about Donaldson, when we were in Toronto, they kept saying Tulowitzki is as important a contribution to this club as anybody here. Oh, uh, it was ridiculous when they brought him on to stabilize the defense. What a, uh, an impact he made. Um, the backbone of the this Blue Jays uh, defensive team, they made a serious upgrade in getting Tulowitzki, and I think that helped the rotation as well. Tillman gets him to go after it, a run in, two hits, one left on. The Uncanese on run puts Toronto up one another.
Marlboro has won 500 for being selected. 500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play baseball buck scratch offs and win up to 50,000 instantly. Learn more mdlottery.com slash baseball. Now there, there's a family having a time at the ball game. How about that cutie with the big hat on there? There, put that up, Graham, so I can see. Thank you very much. Final week, and of course, Fan Appreciation Weekend will start on Friday when the Yankees come in. But it's Fan Appreciation every night here at Camden Yards, and if you'll have a chance to get out to the ballpark, see the Orioles here in this final week, incredibly, of the 2015 season. Steve Clevenger will stand in. DH roll. He is one for four off Estrada. And a foul right straight back. Orioles DH this season has tended to be towards the middle of the pack. As far as RBIs and average is concerned, the Orioles are eighth in average as a DH. RBIs, not good, 13th. And home runs, last. Far from the numbers that the Orioles had last season out of the DH spot. And of course, a number of players have moved through that DH. There's been no consistent DH since Paredes got set down after the first half. 0 2, a little tapper back to the mound. Pretty good throw made to get him, Estrada. Well, the Orioles will continue their final week of the regular season games against the Jays and Yankees on Wednesday, 7 05 against Toronto. It's the Miguel Gonzalez designed El Mariachi t shirt. Don't miss final giveaway. Coming up on Wednesday for tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. There he is. No Gonzalez. Good news that uh, he's healthy. You what? Healthy. Healthy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going to pitch, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that A in there since we're playing Toronto. <laughs> that will be a base hit for Matt Wieters. So there's the Orioles' first hit. Second runner. One out. Just try to keep that line rolling. Orioles uh, have had some trouble here getting consecutive hits, putting some pressure on the opposing team. Talked about uh, their ability, though, here at home. Put up some runs. A lot of road troubles this year, but uh, very comfortable in the friendly confines of Camden Yards. Here is Jonathan Scope. One for three against Estrada. That's a home run. That's going to be a base hit into right field. They swung the infield around the other way. Bautista will get it back in, and the Orioles have two on here in the second. We're well, going to like that. Picking up a base hit the other way after the Weeder single. Maybe targeting that hole over there. He gets a fastball up and out over, and he scorches it through the hole. Yeah, Orioles threatening a little bit here. So two on and one down, and that will bring up Ryan Flaherty. With Pyra moving over to play center with Adam Jones out, Flaherty gets the start in right field in this ball game. It is his third start in right field this year, and an RBI chance playing for the bunt. Donaldson at third, not bunting in the air, left field hit pretty good. Revere back up, goodbye home run, and that will end the streak as Ryan Flaherty delivers a three. Homer here in the second inning, and the Orioles take a three to one lead. Hallelujah. Ryan Flaherty, what a swing going the other way, showing his opposite field power. With the Orioles on the board, the big crooked number. Flaherty picking up his ninth home run and kind of following suit. Jonathan Scope going the other way. Flaherty backing up a fastball as well. If you show you're going to be over aggressive, Estrada will expose you with the changeup. A couple nice approaches there in the Orioles offense. So the Orioles are on the board and a 3 1 lead. That'll be foul back. 22nd home run off Estrada. Yo, that actually might have been a changeup. Started him off first pitch. Change even better. More impressive for Flaherty letting that ball travel. J.J. Hardy, the 0 1 pitch to him, and that is foul back. Souvenir to be remembered. How about this? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at the eyes. That is great. Oh, my gosh. 
You go to the ballpark hoping, and then when it happens, hallelujah. There's a big pop up to short off the bat of Hardy. Going says there, and we'll put it away, and there are two down. <laughs> <laughs> That is great. Uh, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, that is the beauty of coming to the ballpark. Watch a big league game and you have a chance to a foul ball or maybe a huge home run. That's now you get to tell everybody how you did it. Yeah. How you caught it, what you were doing, what you were thinking. Right? How about filling out that ball saying that ended the uh, scoreless yeah. streak scoreless for the Orioles? Streak. Yeah. And 29 innings. And the pitch is taken for a strike here as power of flight out his first time up. Interesting uh, against Estrada coming into the ball game, the Orioles only had nine hits in the lineup. The Orioles in the lineup, nine hits against Estrada, but four of them were home runs. And now the Orioles have added three hits in this ball game. So in the lineup, there are 13 hits, and of the 13, five have been homers by the Orioles starters. 0 2 count. Barra will take it down low. Strata comes in with the fifth best ERA in the league at 3 1 3. The Orioles have already almost reached that. He is fifth in ERA on the road at 3 3 1. 22 home runs surrendered. 13 of those hit by lefties. Barra got one jams it out towards the gap. Left center going away from the center fielder. Diving in a tremendous catch. Kevin Pilar sliding along the outfield grass will deny a double or better to Pyra. A great catch by Pilar, but the Orioles get three on three hits. The blow that brought him in, Ryan Flaherty delivering one the opposite way for his ninth of the year in a three to one Orioles lead. Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com and by your local Mercedes dealership. So the Orioles get the lead. And Flaherty got the long ball and the start in right field. Kawasaki will lead it off, number nine hitter. Then it'll be Revere and Donaldson. Now Kawasaki is going to get a good deal of playing time down the stretch for an unusual reason. Darwin Barney, who would probably be playing second base over Kawasaki with Tulowitzki out, Barney's not eligible for the postseason. And Kawasaki is. He drills it to the gap. Para. He'll get it. So if Tulowitzki should not be able to get back for the playoffs, Kawasaki would be the one who would be on their playoff roster. Yeah, well, at least they're familiar with Kawasaki. Uh, been up and down here the last couple of years, but. We're happy with his defense. He uh, he's versatile, can play all the infield positions, and really well liked. Good teammate. You see, the <laughs> he thought he got that one. 
He's always alive, <laughs> electric alive, in a good way. Here is Revere. Revere flying out to left field his first time up. Toronto's won four in a row. The Orioles have lost three in a row. This is the first of four games these teams will play in this set to round out the season series. Miguel Gonzalez will go tomorrow. Marcus Stroman. Kevin Gosman against R.A. Dickey. The Orioles haven't announced their fourth starter who will go against David Price. Now we should mention on Wednesday with Miguel Gonzalez and his T-shirt, a mariachi T-shirt, will be performing. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Mariachi. Revere will take the pitch. It is inside. I can say of all the things I've been waiting for this season, there is little I have longed to see more than this. Yeah. Yeah. Miguel Gonzalez, mariachi performance. Okay. <laughs> you sound reticent. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to expect, I guess, with this. Uh... <laughs> I haven't seen it. I've not seen the performance yet. That's why I'm so anxious. All right. Two we'll balls, two. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. And a ground ball. Hardy took a low hop. Gets it. Let's take a look at our express stat by Express Care, LifeBridge Health Partner. For locations, visit yweightintheer.com. I'll we'll take a look at this pitch comparison the season. Uh, Chris Dillman against the American League East. Just three wins, eight losses, and a 7.55 earned run average. Of course, bolstered by the starts against the Blue Jays, where he's flipped out a 15.50 earned run average. But against the rest of baseball, 7 and 3 with a very good 3.30 earned run average. And the opponent batting average way down to 2.34. And here is Donaldson with two down nobody on he grounded out his first time up. And he will take the pitch for his strike. Well one thing Tillman is doing tonight that's 10 of 11 first pitch strikes. And that is so vital. In particular for Tillman who if you will goes by the book. The 0 1 if he gets a first strike opponents hit 227. If he throws ball one it jumps to 303. And I like the fact that uh, he's mixing it up first pitch as well. Throwing some sliders, the change ups first pitch, locating the fastball very well right now. 0 oh, 2 count to Donaldson will be up high for a ball. If Donaldson should win the MVP, he would join George Bell, the only other Blue Jay to win an American League MVP. One two pitch on the way and that'll be outside. Will he get it? Seemingly Mike Trout is his firmest opposition. Yeah, Mike Trout uh, having another incredible season uh, nearing 300. Just topped out at the 40 home runs but 88 RBI Donaldson 300. He's got 41 homers and of course that monster number of 122 RBI is very productive. Come up with some clutch hits. You mentioned him with the walk off home run last night. Just added to the mantra of MVP heard in Toronto. 3 2 delivery on the way. Ground ball towards second base, played by Scope. Good job by Tillman. The early innings have been very tough for Tillman this season, but he has gone through the first three years surrendering only one run.
Yankees can clinch a playoff spot if they beat Boston and either the A's beat the Angels or Seattle beats the Astros. So the Yankees could get one clinch tonight. The Dodgers can clinch National League West on their own. If they beat the Giants tonight, they've done it. And the Rangers' magic number to clinch the division title is still pretty high. It's at five. That yeah, is. With the Astros closing to two and a half. Still a ways to go there for the uh, Texas Rangers. How about the Dodgers? Look, they have not won a game in San Francisco all year long. How about that? Against a team that has struggled. It is such a great rivalry when they get in the other's ballpark. It, it has been the home team that gets a big advantage. Here's Manny Machado. Manny popped out his first time up. Orioles have the three to one lead. Strada's delivery is fouled back over the screen. Oh, Manny Machado uh, has been tearing the cover off the ball all year, but <laughs> against Toronto, 368, three home runs, and 13 RBI. Quite an offensive season for Manny Machado. 0 oh, 2 delivery to him, reaching. Estrada, what he has at stake in these, in this last start, next to last start, he's trying to be the third playoff pitcher. Right now, they have already earmarked David Price and Marcus Stroman as the first two. Haven't named the third. 0 2 delivery on the way, and that'll just miss inside. He's having a great second half. 13 starts since the All Star game. He's 7 and 3. ERA is 2.7. Since the All Star break. 1 2 delivery and Manny reaching pops it up first base. Manny wasn't sure where the ball had gone. He is retired. Calabello puts it away. Now the O's close out the regular season. Fan appreciation. We talked about starts Friday with the Yankees in town. Special events all weekend long. Fireworks Friday. John Hopkins Medical provides it. The Orioles knit bomber hats. First 20,000 fans, 15 over Saturday. Steve Pierce fans choice bobbleheads. AT&T provides it on Sunday. 25,000 fans, 15 and over. All coming up. Fan appreciation weekend. Chris Davis drew a walk his first time up again, way out in front. That one cued off the end of the bat. Now Chris Davis's numbers against Toronto this year: 304, five home runs, nine RBI. The Crusher uh, doing some serious damage. Big reason why they've played so many runs per game against the Blue Jays. That ball is put up in the air again off the end of the bat into the shift. Second base. Kawasaki. Two down here in the third inning. Adam Jones, Jones back out on the bench. He's receiving treatment both before, during, and after the game to try and get that back loosened up and feeling better. Yeah, there were some hopes yesterday that uh, he was going to make it through okay, but you could tell as that game progressed that uh, he was limited. And I think if Adam Jones could, he would certainly be on the field here, finish up this season. Now questionable whether or not Orioles will see him again. Yep. Two down, nobody on. Steve Pierce clean up in the lineup. Three for 12 now off Estrada. Remember, Estrada overall has got the lowest batting average of any pitcher in the league, 208. Orioles getting those three runs off him, three consecutive hits in the second inning is no easy task. 2 0 pitch on the way to win. That one fell off the table. Well, that's the pitch right there. No reason that batting average is uh, down so low against him. A great change up. Of course, uh, incredible arm sell right there, but a significant separation from his fastball. Two ball, one strike delivery. That'll be punched in the air to right. Batista will put it away. So Estrada has a 1 2 3 inning. We've completed three. The Orioles up 3 1.
Bob Feller Act of Valor Award. Feller, of course, served in World War II, Hall of Fame pitcher. Darren's one of just 22 active player finalists for the 2015 Feller Act of Valor Award. After hearing the story about him and, and hearing about the choices he made to, to leave the comforts of home and, and to go off and, and serve a few days after uh, you know, Pearl Harbor, um, it's, it's one of the toughest choices you can make to uh, leave the comforts and, and, and go fight and risk your life uh, for the rest of the people that are at home. Um, so yeah, it's a tremendous honor to be uh, associated with him. And Bob Feller did exactly that. And the funniest stories was Bob the Hall of Famer would not talk to Yogi Berra for a long time and Yogi said I think he's the only guy in the world that doesn't like me. So he went up and asked him one day Bob why don't you like me and fella said you didn't serve in World War Two and Yogi said oh yes I did, oh, yes, he did. and fella said I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were he had thought forever. all those years wow. that Yogi had not gone and both Yogi and Bob were not just active duty they were participants on the front. Oh yeah. Both of them were and and Bob didn't know that for a long time. Wow. I would see Yogi all over the place and every year at the hall huh. and finally Yogi went up and asked him. Unbelievable. <laughs> well that's a great honor for Darren O'Day who it always uh, recognizes the men and women that fight for uh, our freedom. Jose Bautista grounded out his first time up. Bautista rips that one. That'll go to left towards the wall. Take a hop right off the base. Good play by Pierce. Will hold him to a single. Nice job by Pierce. Handled that cleanly. No chance for Bautista to advance beyond first base. Well, Bautista waiting on the changeup. You see the circle change grip. What a terrible pitch. But you got to believe that uh, Bautista is going up there thinking one or the other, either fastball or off speed. He guessed right. It's used a very good batting eye. Rarely chase, especially early in counts. Leads the league in walks. Here is Arcanacion who delivered the home run his 36th of the year. Leading off the second inning. Three against Tillman in his career now and uh, over a 326 batting average lifetime against Tillman. Aaron Canacion this season, five home runs against the Orioles and 12 RBIs. In this, the 16th game these teams have played. Tillman with the 0 1 delivery outside to him. Chris Davis still tied with Cruz, home run leader, 43. Donaldson's got 41. Bautista's got 39. Aaron Canacion with 36 is tied with David Ortiz for seventh place. You got a lot of home runs in this ballpark. Oh boy. <laughs> Between these two teams. 1 1 delivery on the way and it'll be fouled off. Yeah, unfortunate that uh, Adam Jones isn't in the lineup tonight because uh, he typically has great success against the Blue Jays as well. You see Encarnacion's, Encarnacion's power zone. A lot of red there. Of course, the ball gets in the red. That's where he does the most damage, covers the baseball. Tillman's second pitch. Was covered. One two count, Bautista off first. Ground ball right towards Jonathan Scope. Not hit that hard. Plenty of time for Hardy, and he'll turn the double play. Nicely done right there by Chris Tillman to induce that double play ball. Getting in on the hands a little bit of an encarnacion. He forces it over there to Jonathan Scope, and they clean it up nicely. Well executed down in the zone. Scope with the underhand feed to Hardy and Hardy so clean to finish it off. So that takes care of the uh, leadoff single by Bautista. Two down, bases empty. Chris Colabello up. Colabello called out on strikes his first time up. Breaking ball. We'll just miss inside. Tillman after win number 11 trying to even up his record he had 13 wins last year. That'll be to the middle and a base hit. Galabello on with a single he got one out over the plate where he could extend his arms and did. Our PNC minor league report we salute the Orioles minor leagues. Yeah, Norfolk Tides uh, this season 78 66 finished first place in the South Division. Chris Jones had himself a fine year 8 and 8 record with a 2 9 4. He was named International League Pitcher of the Week twice. Christian Walker 
Of course, another strong offensive year. 52 extra base hits at 18 home runs. That was tied for third in the International League. And Oliver Drake, wow, what a season. 23 saves in 23 opportunities in the International League postseason. All-star had 66 punch-outs and 40 four innings of work only allowing four runs uh, an impressive year for Oliver Drake and certainly earned his opportunity to be back up here in the big leagues and there he is in the bullpen and working for the Orioles on a pretty regular basis considering the number of pitchers available Colabella wanted first base two down Navarro flied out to center field his first time up he will foul that one off at the plate and Tillman continues to throw a lot of strikes and it gets ahead of him 0 and 2. There are times when uh, Tillman hurts himself by just losing uh, command. Walks have hurt him and of course elevates his pitch count early in ball games. Nice to see him aggressive in the zone. Some quality pitches here in the early going with all of his offerings. On at first base, Colabello. 0 2 delivery to him and a swing and a miss. That's where he's getting them up high with that heater. That'll be strikeout number three. No runs, two hits, one left on. Orioles lead it. And he'll be the first NL rookie to reach 100 since 2006 when Ryan Zimmerman with Washington at 110. For Chris, as we said, he's only had a home run in the last one in the last seven. Cruz has had only one in the last 10. So they remain tied at 43 for the major league home run lead. And Zach Greinke is pitching tonight for the Dodgers. He has earned a decision in 10 straight starts, 9 and 1. With a 2 2 1 ERA over that span, he will be after his 19th victory tonight against the Giants. Well, Greinke, uh, unbelievable year. And even Chris Bryant, he, he didn't get caught. He didn't make the team out of spring training. How about that, huh? That's so limited games. And a heck of a job for him. Steve Clevenger up there. See so off speed delivery in for a strike. Clevenger grounded out his first time up. Stroud is overhand another cue shot off the end of the bat goings up and makes the play went away fourth inning not receiving mass and mobile alerts due to new regulations some Orioles fans have stopped receiving mobile text alerts from Masson to rejoin and receive in game updates team news and exclusive prizes just text the word Orioles to two nine two nine two. Yankees have the early lead against Boston one nothing playing in New York pitch will be taken up for a ball the Yankees trailing Toronto for the division lead by four games. How about that Steve Pierce uh, frustrated after that last at bat. 
getting out in front a little bit. We're actually getting jammed on the fastball after a changeup, and he's got cool ball right there in his ear. To keep him up and on his game, the grind. Can you believe it? There's a week to go. Steve Pierce still just yeah. so. I mean, you get into this and the frustration mounts and it mounts and. In the air, left field, not deep down the line. Ben Revere won't have a play on it. Falls in. Waiters makes a big turn and stays. So Matt's two for two. He came in ahead of Flaherty on the home run in the second after he'd singled. Yeah, Matt Waiters started that rally in the second inning. First of. Uh, Three hits, of course, topped off with that Flaherty homer. They get after it again. And that will bring up Jonathan Scope. Runner on at first base. The Orioles and Jays both have four hits in the ball game, but the Orioles have the three to one lead. That pitch will be fouled right straight back. Scope also picked up a single. His first time up going against the grain. The defense has moved around, not all the way, playing him to pull. And he went the other way towards second base. Got a base hit. Well, it's nice to see uh, after uh, that tough weekend up in Fenway Park when a lot of the, the lefties that the Red Sox featured had a very similar arsenal. Slow breaking balls, slow change ups. And the Orioles kept uh, trying to pull instead of using that whole field and really got tied up in the three game series. Jonathan hitting a 240 here in the month of September. 1 1 count. Weeders off first. And that one drilled in the air left field. That one back near the wall. Revere gets to the warning track and hauls it in. Good speed by Ben Revere to catch that one. Two down. Register now for the Longevity Foundation's Breathe Deep Baltimore 5K Walk to raise funds and awareness for lung cancer research in memory of the late Orioles Public Relations Director Monica Pence Barlow. It's going to be this Saturday here at the ballpark. So you can register and help contribute at Orioles.com slash longevity. Flaherty the home run. Second inning is ninth. Three RBIs, and those are the Oriole runs. And he puts Allen in the air with a broken bat to right. Batista settles under and has it. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. For a complete game one, four game set against the Jays. Five consecutive seasons, 2011 to 2015, up over 200 homers. This year, 205 long balls. Blue Jays, three consecutive seasons. And the Houston Astros, back to back years, went over, are in the top five with home runs. And our Jeep inside the numbers on the long ball. 3 4 0 for the Orioles, 1 4 0 for the Jays. 
Pilar who picked up a base hit his first time up now has a six game hit streak and will take the pitch up high for a ball. Pilar is second on the team in the multi hit games. That's pretty amazing when you consider this lineup. And he's been able to reach that level. As we said, he's had a real good year against the Orioles, hitting 345, three home runs, and eight RBIs against the O's. And he's done some damage against Tillman after that last base hit he picked up the other way. He's hitting 500 now with a, a double and three home runs against Tillman. Pilar, not only, or I guess he's known as a great defender, had an unbelievable year defensively playing left field and center field, but the bat has been consistent. And it's come up huge for this Blue Jays lineup, bolstering the bottom, not our bottom part of the order. Well, I will take the pitch, and Tillman falls behind. Three balls and one strike. Kevin Pillar last year, 53 games with Toronto, 36 the year before, and now uh, part of the stable. Gets it in, and the count goes to three and two for Tillman. No walks, three strikeouts. Estrada has walked one and struck out none in the ball game. Three ball, two strike count. Lead off batter Pilar will rip it foul. Chris Tillman, one of the problems, one we mentioned earlier, not throwing first pitch strikes. He has been doing that tonight. The other, lead off men getting on. Here in this ball game, two of the first four leadoff batters have reached one on a homer, one on the base hit. He's retired only 61% of leadoff batters. That one will be fouled off at the plate, three and two. Pitch right there from Chris Tillman. You saw him uh, working that outer third with all of his pitches against Pilar there. Center cut, two seam fastball. But, uh, Pilar fights off. See the Nissan pitch track. Battle right here. Tillman knows that Pilar has done some damage off him. Trying to find a way, a hole somewhere. 3 2 delivery to him. Pilar will put that one in the air. It's towards no man's land, but Jonathan Scopes there. And this leadoff man is retired. So much to see and do in the beaches and islands of Sarasota, Florida's Gulf Coast. Go beyond the stadium to see us to beach. Name winner of the 15 TripAdvisor Traveler's Choice Awards for beaches. Plan now at visit Sarasota.org. Still night. You can see the flags on the flag court down as they are in center. And it's turned out to be a really nice evening. I mean, we started at 75 degrees, so it's warm. Pitch taken for a ball. Goings has struck out. He's now eight for 21. Lifetime off Tillman with a home run. One oh by Tillman. Well the Cardinals are obviously been a very good team all year heading to the playoffs. Announcement today the Yadier Molina is not going to play again. Their outstanding catcher for the regular season at least is out tear in his left thumb. He suffered that injury back on the 20th. They had hoped that it would get better quicker. It hasn't. Wow. That's a tough one. Talk about a heart and soul of a team. Yeah. He yeah, is their captain. 2 1 count. Shift on. Spinner. Caught sliding. Manny Machado. He had just moved closer to the shortstop position. Had he not done so, he wouldn't have got it. A great play there by Manny Machado and a great decision to go get this baseball. It's hanging up there and a lot of times infielders might play it back. Well, there's a lot of spin on this ball. Chris Tillman got all in the kitchen of Goins and Manny Machado. Another sensational play. You see the bat flying out there. Tillman coming off the back of the mound and there is Manny Machado. Once again, I mean, this guy has got range. If you showed across the field some of his plays, <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's made plays out in the left field line. He's made plays behind the pitcher's mound. Incredible uh, range from Machado. Kawasaki taking the pitch did not go around. He is flied out. It was interesting because the Orioles almost got caught right there. They were shifting while Tillman was winding up. 
And Manny Machado was moving over towards second base that put him in a better position to make that catch. Pitch will be away and uh, Weeders was out to do a little ground screw work. And some splinters left over from Goins bat. The Manny got over there where he needed to be. And 2 0 count on Kawasaki. Top of the order, Revere waiting on deck. And that pitch will be up high. So the count goes to 3 and 0. Oh. You would think he would be taking here. But two down and the leadoff man on deck, and the Jays down by two. Pitch 3 and 0 oh. is going to be there for a strike. You got to get back in the zone here. You do not want to walk the number nine batter, Kawasaki. If he, uh, I think his best bolt was in his first at bat, and of course Parra ran that one down out in right center, and he is on. So for Tillman, that will be the first walk surrendered. It comes with two down here in the fifth inning. Here's the movement we were talking about on that play just before Manny caught the pop up. Look at the defense. See, look at him move, move, move. If he doesn't go over there, probably doesn't get it. I'll tell you what, and that's a great uh, teaching example too. You want your infielders uh, if they want to maximize their range, they have to get their feet active. Well, Manny, a little bit out of position there. Bob, Bobby Dickerson moving him over, so his feet. He was bouncing up and down. He yeah. had a great first step. It came up with a highlight film play. So with one on is Revere. Revere has flied out, grounded out. Two for five off Tillman, leadoff batter. And that real fine 313 batting average for him. Revere forces Machado to play even with a bag. With that great speed he's got. And the pitch is in there for a strike. See, Revere's got a lot of movement at the plate getting ready to cock the trigger. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, and a lot of. Hitters have different ways to get themselves going, different loads. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of Tony Phillips, who used to have the big drop in the back. Even Eric Davis, who played for the uh, Orioles, had that drop, and it was a matter of it, couldn't they get their hands back up on top of the zone? Well, Revere, a veteran player, certainly proven that his timing mechanism works. Revere with a great speed. He is third in the majors in singles with 144. Base hits, sixth in stolen bases. Great contact hitter. 0 2 count, runner off first base. That ball toward the middle has spin. Hardy goes right to the bag, and that will do it. Kawasaki the force out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. Pitchers in charge, and the Orioles are up. The talk always is about how money buys wins and championships. 
Well among the teams currently in the playoffs there are their payroll rankings. It covers the gamut from one and two Dodger Yankees. You do have four of the top ten teams in the top four. And then you got everybody middle of the pack Cardinals Cubs and even the Astros at twenty ninth. Yeah well I think that Astros is uh, one of their first round picks that they've gotten over a number of years starting to pan out. Well, yeah I mean every year it seems like it's that way and sometimes the formula works for uh, small market teams. Going over to the corners Revere off the bat of Hardy and he'll put it away. Yeah we'll see how much the money matters if it does where is to where the teams ultimately end up in the postseason when it's all said and done. One down here in the fifth inning that'll be Para up Para has flied out twice last time robbed of a hit by Kevin Pillar made a spectacular diving catch in center field. Geraldo Parra, one of the free agents the Orioles will be talking about, are talking about, trying to make a decision. You bring uh, him back to the ball club. Talking with him before the game tonight. He wants to come back. Likes it here, likes playing here, likes the team, likes everything about it. And would like to have an opportunity to be here for a full season. Chris Davis, of course, top of the list. And then free agents. Parra puts it up in the air to center. Pilar. Two down. And the Estrada fly ball propensity Mike was talking about at the top of the broadcast showing up in the ball game. Yeah, he's uh, scattering fly balls all over the place and uh, still a few Orioles in between on the fastball and that changeup mix. And Estrada's used to his benefit all season long. A great year, career high with the 13 wins. That'll bring up Manny Machado. Manny 0 for 2 and a couple of pop ups. He's been out in front of the off speed pitch on those. See that out distribution, three ground outs, 11 fly ball outs. Here's the 0 1 delivery, and he will foul that one right straight back. We'll take a look at the lowest uh, opponent average on balls in play. Now, this is in your own division this season. Uh, Darren Horan, uh, Chris Young, and there is Estrada against American League East, 191. And a batting average with balls put in play. Now on the year, Estrada's had a great number in that uh, category as well, just 223. And normally, the league average is right around 300. He's below 300 in his career, but uh, very impressive to shut down the East uh, to that number with balls in play. 0-2 is up and in after he'd worked away on him, and a one-ball, two-strike count on Manny. Orioles trailing in the series six games to nine against Toronto with the final four being played here. One two delivery towards the middle shortstop goings good play. And the Orioles are retired three up and three down five complete here at Camden Yards the Orioles up on the Flaherty home run three to one.
the division leader Toronto Blue Jays while well, Encarnacion gets it going his 36th home run in the second inning a solo shot but Ryan Flaherty he stops the scoreless streak ends it at 29 innings with a three run bomb and Manny Machado showing his incredible platinum glove caliber range with a diving effort behind the mound Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Hey, nice work. Wow. You could set up a stand if you can make one of those. Here's Josh Donaldson. He'll go into the shift. Jonathan Scope. And one pitch and one out. Here is Bautista base hit one for two. See this season uh, versus the O's ranks among American least League East players 372 batting average that's tied with Geyer from Tampa Bay five home runs tied for second with Longoria from Tampa Bay and 17 RBI first in the American League East. It's a lot of damage done against the Orioles on the season by Bautista. One of the ironies is this power hitter this has never been a ballpark where he's done well. His average here is 195 lifetime with over 220 at bats here at Camden Yards. Oh, that was actually uh, he was an Oriole. Yeah. Time so you know, familiar with this ballpark. He's hit 24 home runs against the Orioles in his career. Ten of them have been here at Camden Yards. One ball one strike delivery on the way by Tillman and that'll miss a little bit outside. Aaron Canacion waiting on deck. Jays have had success, obviously, in the division, or you're not in first place. They are 39 and 30. Not really as big a spread as you might expect for a division leading ball club. But this division has kind of chewed itself up. Teams playing against one another this year. I mean, even the Orioles have done well yeah. in the division. Three ball, one strike count. And Bautista takes it. It's going to be there. He uh, takes a little jaunt towards first. Fans enjoy that. 3-1 slider. Uh, take a look at the Nissan pitch track here. We're trying to work the edges and he gets a slider call at the top of the strike zone. Bautista loading up in the 3-1 count. And a chopper that hit right in front of home plate. Tillman's got to beat him to the bag. No. Bautista. Wisely choosing not to try and run through Chris Davis. <laughs> Discretion still the better part of Valor. Nice little play right there by Chris Davis. Vacating the bag a little bit, but starts to stumble and slip. And uh, wise decision taking that one himself. Cut Batista off. Almost uh, looks like a football play right there. Yes. <laughs> so Batista out of there. He's one for three, and there are two down here in the sixth inning. Tillman holding down this. Toronto offense. The two away here in the sixth. All right, Canacion's done the only damage. A home run leading off the second inning is 36. Next time up, he hit into a double play. Up high. Yankees still leading Boston 1 0. Rodriguez pitching for Boston. They held him out against the Orioles to pitch against the Yankees. He's given up a run on five hits. Von Nova for the Yankees no runs on three hits a rod sack fly RBI the only Yankee run so far. 2 0 count. And Canacion one of the few true DHs he Ortiz guys who DH every ball game. 2 0 delivery. And it'll be taken up high. Chris Tillman uh, which is one through 75 just a 249 batting average but 14 home runs allowed after he gets above 75 pitches so uh, got to watch out average goes way up and Chris Tillman and I was talking about his last home start here against the uh, Blue Jays back on May 12th he pitched six and two thirds innings he scattered the nine hits but uh, when he left. Left a couple runners on base and three runs ended up scoring in the seventh inning. So that up the earned run to five in that ball game. But he was doing a nice job against this Blue Jays lineup. They're a great pitch as it tails down and in. 
He's got a full count here and on Canacion the 3 2 delivery on the way ground ball to third Manny Machado gets the hop makes the throw with plenty of time and a 1 2 3 inning recorded and that will set down Toronto yet again and the Orioles maintain a 3 to 1 lead. Masson is brought to you by the Maryland Fire Chiefs and Maryland State Firemen's Associations. Email mdfirevolunteer at gmail.com. Volunteer with your local fire rescue and EMS. Gary Thorne, Mike Bordick with you. There's not a game where we do not have the Orioles Hawaiian shirt somewhere in the audience, be it at home or on the road. I suspect if we played here on January 20th, We'd be able to find at least one person. <laughs> Absolutely. 20 below with the Hawaiian shirt on. And the off speed delivery is going to be in there for a strike. Chris Davis leading it off. He has walked, the only walk surrendered, and he has popped out. Certainly a comfortable night to have that shirt on here at the ballpark. Pierce and Clevenger to follow, and uh, that one up at 88, and an 0 2 count on Chris. Navarro wanting that fastball up and in, and Estrada hitting his spot. Three run homer Flaherty, second inning. Those are the runs for the Orioles. Home run on Canacion, solo shot for Toronto. Estrada in his outings against the Orioles, there have been three of them previously. Has not given up more than three runs in any of them. Three runs, five hits, and five. One run, one hit, and seven. Two runs, two hits, and five. Those are the numbers of his three previous starts. Orioles have already picked up the three runs on four hits against Estrada in this game. Shift on against Davis. Two two. And Chris goes after one down low. Boy, up, down, and all around on that at bat. That's his first strikeout. Now changing the eye level, working the fastball up and in, and then drops the nasty change. 78 miles an hour at the bottom of the zone. I think it's going to stay up and ride knee high, so Davis offers at it. Dive bombs underneath the zone. Strata's had only one game, it was against Boston, where he had one strikeout. No games without a strikeout. Popped up first base in the fair territory. It'll be put away. Colabello gets it, and a couple of quick outs here in the sixth inning. Help Maryland Governor Larry Hogan and the Orioles in their fight against pediatric cancer and save 50 percent on tickets to the remaining games in this week's series against the Jays. Go to Orioles.com slash charity. Help raise funds for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and the Ronald McDonald House Charities. That's at Orioles.com slash charity. Clevenger is lined out grounded out and will take the pitch away for a ball. First to four against the Jays trying to prevent them from clinching a division title here at Camden Yards. And that one just going to miss 2 and 0. 
saw Strada starting Clevenger out with that breaking ball and he doesn't really throw the curveball too often, but he likes to get ahead with that pitch. He pitters uh, kind of thinking about it. Popped him up again, had him out in front. Navarro at the plate will make the play in a one, two, three inning. And uh, that's going to be eight in a row with set down, but the Orioles still lead it. Three to one. That's what you have seen here in game one of this set on this uh, beautiful early fall evening. 3 1, 3 4 0 oh for the Orioles, 1 4 0 oh for the Jays. Orioles have left just two on base, three for the Jays. Tillman and Estrada in a real good pitching duel as we go to the seventh inning. Tillman's pitch will be taken for a strike. Colabello has singled and he has been called out on strikes. The home run by Aaron Canacion, second inning. The only base runner to reach second or third or home for the Jays in this ball game. Oh, one pitch on the way will be popped up. Right center field scope. Jonathan puts it away. One away here in the top of the seventh inning. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. However a clip of this game is available for that young man and his family after he caught that home run ball by Ryan Flaherty. <laughs> that is so awesome I love that. Navarro's 0 for 2. He has struck out at flight out. He'll put it up in the air as well. A lot of early dinner reservations tonight here in Baltimore. That'll be handled by Machado, and there are two down. And this first pitch changeup right there from Chris Tillman. He is filling up the strike zone with all of his offerings. His location with the fastball as well there to get Colabello. A couple quick outs here. Chris Tillman very efficient. Brad Brock up in the bullpen for the Orioles. How about the 62 strikes to 30 balls thrown tonight by Tillman. Yeah you know and uh, even his misses have been good misses. There have been some outings this year where uh, a handful of non competitive pitches for Chris Tillman and here you keep it close to the zone you're going to get some earlier swings as he's done to this point. So a nice uh, outing here for Chris. Real good one as he continues to throw those first pitch strikes and Pilar. At the plate, one down, uh, two down rather. Pilar's had a base hit. Pitch will be down low to him. One ball, one strike count. Chris had one of his shortest outings last time against Toronto. Six runs, eight hits, and three innings. Nothing like that 
in this ball game. One one pitch on the way and we'll just miss outside with it. Count will go to two and one. Twenty seven years old fifty five wins forty two losses. Major League career record. Two one delivery on the way and a swing and a miss. Good 80 mile an hour pitch. Oh, that is a nice change up from Chris Tillman. I mean so tough the big guy gets on top incredible angle. So Pilar's thinking like most hitters that fastball is going to ride through the zone but pulls the string a great change. And right to Davis at first base. So the side retired in order. Two in a row. He set him down one, two, three. Seventh inning stretch time. Camden Yards. What is it about not being on the road and being back home at Camden Yards? Uh, is there any explanation why it makes such a difference to the well, Orioles? I, I think the Orioles obviously love playing here. They've had great success here in Camden Yards. It's a it's an awesome ballpark and they take advantage of it to the fullest extent. Of course with the long ball on the road it's just been a struggle this season. Yeah. Uh, nothing has really worked for them. The pitching's been uh, a trouble spot for them all year long. Uh, they, ha they haven't scored as many runs on the road, so it's good to see them here. Uh, you know, with the lead against the Blue Jays right now, and Chris Tillman throwing a great ball game. I mean, uh, Tillman's looking as sharp as we've seen him. Unbelievable command of all of his pitches, pounding the zone against uh, arguably the best offense in baseball this year. Here is Matt Wieters, and he will take the pitch for a strike. Orioles up bottom of the seventh inning two hits weeders he has scored a run he and scope both had singles ahead of the home run by Ryan Flaherty. Estrada has gone the distance. Weeders goes the distance the other way going over in the corner nice running catch made again. Ben Revere he's gotten a couple one to his right one to his left in this ball game and weeders is retired. Oh, Revere, uh, another one of those pickups after the All Star break. And look at the range that he has. I mean, a long time quality outfielder. Nice line to the baseball. Weeder smoked this ball the other way, but incredible concentration. A couple steps away from the wall, come down with the first out. And that'll bring Jonathan Scope up a base hit. Run scored, and he has flied out. How well these pitchers have performed both of them tonight that the Orioles are just going through the third time to the plate. 1 0 delivery on the way breaking ball down and away and the count goes to 1 and 1 from Estrada. Estrada is looking for his 14th win 13 and 8 he's lowered his ERA from 4.3 to 3.1 from last year to this year. Dramatic improvement for him. Pitch bounced. Now wants to be part of their big three in the postseason. Yeah, another uh, good story here for the Blue Jays. Of course, they picked him up 
in the offseason for Adam Lynn. And when he came into camp, there was no room in the rotation for him. And some young uh, arms in the rotation. Towards the hole, goings over, 360, nice play. Do it on both sides of uh, second base. Goins on the fine defensive play there. But uh, take a look at Goins' range here. Jonathan Scope. Good piece of hitting there on the outside corner, but Goins on the range up the middle. Pirouette and a strong throw on to first base. Two down, seventh inning. Ryan Flaherty, the home run, and he is flied out to right field. Flaherty's had two home runs against Toronto this season, and he has picked up 10 RBIs against Toronto on the year. The young man who caught the home run ball staying in place for the ball game maybe tiring a bit late in the game have to go to the pen. One ball one strike count on Flaherty. Doesn't he know who's up right now. I'm surprised right. he's not on his feet waiting for another one. <laughs> Here's the one one delivery to him Ryan will take it. It'll be down low. The Flaherty having. Real good season against Toronto and probably his best output RBI wise against any team this year. With that home run pushing the number up to 10. 2 1 pitch. Flaherty down the line the other way foul. He had that whole third base side open as the infields pulled around on him. I like that. He is geared towards left field here in this ball game. Fastball just slapping it. The other way, and now do you have the patience to wait on the change again? Here's the 2 2 delivery, and that's there. So Estrada will pick up his second strikeout. The Orioles are retired in order. We've completed seven, O's up three to one. Nineteen fifty three as the American League owners who had once voted not to allow the team to move from St. Louis reversed their vote on this date. And the next year the Orioles were here. Two thousand eleven the Braves eliminated from the playoffs on the last day of the season. They had an eight game lead in September and it disappeared. You see just a reminder. Yeah exactly. That is it. Uh, baseball is a crazy game. Parra is going to go to right field. Flaherty out. Low in to play center where Parra had been. David Lowe. Eighth inning. 3 1 ball game. All the runs coming in the second inning. Arcanacion a leadoff homer for Toronto. Bottom half of it. Three run homer Flaherty. And that's it. Pitchers have dominated since. Goings has struck out and popped out. Fine play made by Machado on him in the last at bat, and that's going to be a base hit into left field. A leadoff single will bring the potential tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. The day getting ready. 
Longest outing, eight and two thirds for Tillman this year against Atlanta. Smoke's going to come on, power hitter for Kawasaki in the number nine spot. Both these teams, of course, with the deep benches. Kawasaki out of there, having drawn a walk and fly, fly to host. <laughs> All kinds of stuff going on in there. Uh, so here is Justin Smoke. Switch hitter, 270 right, 227 left. But 13 of his 17 home runs have been hit from this side of the plate. Up against Tillman with a leadoff man on the Orioles infield into the shift at double play depth. Smoke will take the pitch. It will be inside and low for a ball. Smoke has two hits, 12 at bats against Tillman. You can see the pinch hit numbers that he's put up. Chris is at the 100 mark. Yeah, very efficient though in this ball game. Uh, I think the most important inning, that third inning where he shut him down after Encarnacion hit a solo shot in the second, and then the Orioles offense comes back with a three run home run and the importance of that shutdown inning has led this team to where they are at this point in the ball game. I mean, uh, huge stop there by Chris Tillman. 1 0 count on smoke. Dangerous hitter. He will take the pitch away. Tillman trying to get to the corners on him. He won't bite. And the count will go to 2 0. So real battle here in the eighth bullpen will be ready. Tillman. Has any further problems here in the eighth inning. Smoke here in this ballpark a 323 lifetime hitter. He has had one home run here at Camden Yards. Runner off first and the 2 0. And that will catch the corner. 2 and 1. A good quality strike right there. You got to be careful. Smoke uh, actually brought over to the Blue Jays offseason for one reason, and that was to let it fly, hit some long balls. A really good first base over there, and he has picked up a number of home runs for this team. Never uh, quite panned out the way I think a lot of people thought Smoke was going to. Yeah, I think a lot of people projected him as being a guaranteed 30 home run a year guy with a better batting average, but he's had some struggles in his career offensively. Two ball, one strike count. The Orioles outfield deep. Smoke will take it, continues to work him away. Tillman slashes at the ball as it comes back to him. Mad at himself. Three and one. And you see the uh, his 29 starts averaging 94.3 season high 110 and here he is at 103 right now then in command this whole ball game. Three and one smoke a tapper. Only play at first. Leaders out to get it records the out smoke retired runner goes to second base now with one away. So with that. And will be it for Chris Tillman. Top of the order, Ben Revere is due up next. Tillman's going to get a fine hand that he leaves with a chance to win his 11th game of the season. Orioles leading it three to one.
to enjoy one of his best starts of the year, shutting down the best offense in the game. Goins to chase the high fastball. Navarro going down on the high fastball. It was all about command of all of his pitches. Slider was on to the fastball. Just 59% fastball usage tonight. Love the breaking ball. Slider was the pitch, and the changeup was money. Every one of his changeups was at the bottom of the zone and for strikes. He got 10 ground ball outs in this ball game. Now it's time for our AT&T call to the bullpen. AT&T, proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. AT&T mobilizing your world with Darren O'Day. Went out of the O's bullpen. Another sensational season for O'Day. Fastball 55%. Breaking ball 45%. Six wins. Six saves on the year. Just coming off a series where he had three consecutive saves against the Nationals. Holding opponents to a 195 overall batting average. And fly ball pitcher too. 64% of his outs in the air. He did not appear in the Boston series. So his last outing was against the Nationals. Runner on at second base, Goings, top of the order, Revere, one down. And O'Day's delivery to him will be up high for a ball. Incredibly, this is the second chance of the game with a runner in scoring position combined. The Orioles are one for one. For Toronto, it's the first chance they've had with a runner in scoring position because Ancanacion's home run is the only. Time a runner ever got the second. 1 0 count. Revere slashes at it and fouls it off. One ball, one strike count. For Darren this year against this ball club, he's got a 2 0 record and 1 1 in saves. Eighth game he's appeared in, only one run, seven hits, seven and a third innings against Toronto. Two walks, but 11 strikeouts. Tillman responsible for the runner on at second base. One and one. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Orioles up by two. O'Day's pitch. Revere's going to get a base hit and an RBI. Over to get it. Low. Holds the runner at first. So Revere delivers, and it is a one run ball game. Three, two, and still only one down. Well, Revere been good with uh, runners in scoring position all year long, and you wonder, can he get his hands back up? With that hit, will O'Day trying to go upstairs with that rising fastball, and he does. Squares one up and it takes off over the head of J.J. Hardy. You see Goins able to score easily. Nice job by Lowe to get it back in to keep that double play in order. Ben Revere will get his 17th RBI as a Blue Jay and his 42nd overall in the year. Now Donaldson up against O'Day. Still one away, runner at first base. Throw over to get him back. That'll be the line on Tillman. Two runs, five hits, seven on a third. Now it is O'Day who has the responsibility for Revere. Donaldson, two for ten off Darren. You got the middle of the order now, Bautista, then Uncanacion if it goes that far. Slider will catch the outside corner for a strike. Oh, great pitch. Uh, Arno Day, incredible ability to locate that slider and that sidearm slot. See Wayne Kirby directing the outfield, puts him in motion low, sliding over to the second base side of second base. Oh, one. One away. Revere off first base, pitch will miss outside. And a one ball one strike count. You've seen repeatedly how these Toronto hitters just do not. Go after many pitches out of the strike zone. That's why they have been able to accumulate. The most walks in the American League. They just don't bite. One and one. Donaldson with the outfield straight away on him. Again the throw over to get Revere back to the bag. One would not expect Toronto to take a chance and have Revere running. In fact, you'd put the stop sign on. You got the middle of the order coming up. Say, so right. do not go. So he'll take off right here. <laughs> one one delivery on the way. Again, slider. This one misses. And the count goes two and one. 
And Donaldson has been locked in all season long. Doesn't chase many pitches out of the zone. He's drawn 71 walks. 2 1 count. Donaldson got one coming in the inside corner that time. He was leaning, looking for a pitch away, and it cut back in under his hands. Two and two. Yeah, great slider after a couple that worked themselves off the plate. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track there. Starts at him. Little buckle there from Donaldson, and the slider works over the inside corner for strike two. Two balls, two strikes, one down. A run in here in the eighth. Two two delivery on the way and Donaldson a chopper middle base hit making the turn Revere he'll stay as low gets it in a hurry. So there are two on and one out with Bautista coming to the plate. I think this is uh, what the fans have been waiting for quite a battle here between Darren O'Day and Bautista in their careers as Blue Jay and Oriole. O'Day's gotten Batista. Batista's gotten O'Day. O'Day's plunked Batista. And Batista's hit a couple home runs and skipped and <laughs> done everything else. Uh, then uh, pretty impressive these two have they gone after each other the last couple seasons. And as you would expect, I mean, if O'Day's in the game, it's probably close. So the at bats are real meaningful yeah. each time it happens. Though uh, Toronto making this very interesting now in the eighth inning. One down, two on. Orioles' lead has been cut to one. Bautista's six for 17 with four home runs off O'Day in his career. He has singled one for three in this game. And Bautista gets a base in right field. Pyra coming. They're going to wave him home. Here's the throw to the plate. Leaders is there. Not in time. Throw is going to get down to second base. They got the runner trapped. Bautista with a runner at third. Tag will be put on. That's a big out. Jonathan Scope. Now did the runner touch the plate? Home plate umpire says yes. Weeders was concerned as to whether or not the tying run Revere touched home. But he was alert enough to get the runner caught in a rundown. Yeah, Parr coming up with a strong throw and Joe West gives the safe call. Matt Wieters thinking there is no way he possibly could have touched home plate, but alertly gets the head up, catches Batista for a big second out, and take a look here. Boy, Revere with a nice slide as Wieters blocked the plate to get that baseball, and he did touch home plate. Well, an interesting at bat. Ball game is tied at 3 3. Aaron O'Day has struggled to get outs here. There you see him crossing the plate with the tying run, Revere. RBI will go to Bautista. Now the potential go ahead run is on at third base with two down as Donaldson moved up. And here is Arn Canacion. Arn Canacion, two for 15 off O'Day. Darren coming on has given up the base hits Revere, Donaldson, and Bautista. Well, and if you look at what this Blue Jays uh, lineup is doing here against O'Day. Just taking what's given. A yeah. chopper up the middle by Donaldson. Batista going the other way. Home run cut right there by Ancanacion. On the throw by Parra, 9 2 6 4 on the put out getting Batista. I mean, that's a big out. Instead of first and third and one away, you got a runner at third and two down. That's a major play here in the eighth inning to give the Orioles a chance to get out of this right now. 1 1 delivery on the way, took it up high. Arn Canacion, even if he doesn't swing, if you just watch him getting ready to pull the trigger, it's all about power. I mean, he's cranking up oh, on yeah. every set. It's all about taking the cover off the baseball. He's got hit, he's got a great understanding of his strike zone. Another uh, these Blue Jays hitters with a lot of walks up in the mid 70s. And he gets him to chase one away. No chance on that slider. Two and two. And a great pitch here. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. The slider hovering out in front of home plate, and then it just makes the hard turn off the outer edge. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Donaldson off third. 
two two delivery set up outside in the full count. That is Brett Cecil the left hander. Bautista and Revere the RBI's that have tied this game up. Chris Tillman will be non decision the ball game is now O'Day's at least for the moment. Three two Donaldson off third. And the ball powered back foul. A few sliders in a row to Encarnacion. He's starting to size that pitch up. Pretty healthy 3 2 cut on a slider there. Stay away. Three two delivery again on Canacion again. Back towards the seat. Sweeters will take a look, but it's out of play. So for the third time, in the eighth pitch will go with a three two. Long inning for a day. Goings let it off with a single. Smoke slow roller moved him up. He scored on the Revere single, Donaldson single, Batista picked up the RBI to tie it. Donaldson's now at third. And Arcanacion and O'Day are in battle. 3 2. Pitch on the way, and that's a pie. So the inning will go on. There's nobody up in the Orioles' bullpen yet, but there's movement. Here's Brad Brock getting ready to go again. Only two walks have been surrendered in the ball game by Tillman and O'Day. Now Colabello coming up. Weeders look like he's stalling for time a little bit here as he gets back behind the plate. Give the bullpen a chance. Colabello's had a base hit. He is one for three. One for two. The only two times he has faced Darren O'Day. First and third, eighth inning, tie game. Two down. And he goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Important for Darren O'Day to get ahead as well. Especially with that high fastball. And now uh, Slider can certainly come in to play and attack there at the end. He's already shown he's going to be aggressive at the top of the zone. I'd be surprised if uh, O'Day gets to that point, finishes him off up there. Donaldson and Canacio on the base runners. A one delivery on the way. Colabello on a check swing into the Oriole dugout. Kevin Gosman doing a little moving over there on the back bench. Yeah, he's trying to see the spot where it hit. Long inning. For Darren O'Day in relief. O2. Weeders moving away. And that's where he went and got him. So O'Day will get the strikeout, but in the eighth inning, two runs score. They do it on uh, four hits, lead two on. Tie game.
we've said we'll have Miguel Gonzalez returning to the mound against Marcus Stroman. Our coverage on Mass and two begins at 6.30 O's Extra, presented by Southwest, followed by our game at 7.30. We've got all the access you need right here on Mass. 7 o'clock for the ball game. Take a look at tomorrow's starters. Marcus Stroman uh, fresh off the disabled list and has been impressive. 3-0 and with a 1.89 earned run average. And Miguel Gonzalez looking to bounce back as well after uh, some time on the side. 4.85 looking for that 10th win. Love to finish this season uh, strong. A couple of defensive changes. Darwin Barney who we talked about earlier will come on to play at second base. And Smoke who pinch hit stays in the nine spot and will play at first base. So after the Orioles got that lead in the second inning it lasted until the eighth. Two runs four hits in the eighth and it is a tie game and Estrada stays on he's gone the distance. And the pitch taken for a strike. Estrada's longest outing this season eight and two third innings. That came against Tampa Bay it's also the longest outing of his career. And the pitch is going to miss down low. So one ball, one strike count. Hardy and then Para and Machado do up. See only 78 pitches thrown. Wow. 1-1. One, one. Misses inside with it. Two ball, one strike count. That's about as efficient as you can get. Yeah. Well, he's been on, I think. Uh, some early swings by the Orioles offense obviously not wanting to uh, get to that change up at the end. Finds the strike zone evens the count up. Two balls and two strikes. Look at those. I mean anything under 15 14 is real good. He hasn't even gotten that high. Two ball two strike delivery on the way foul away. And uh, I guess what the most impressive thing is. You know, Estrada having this successful year here for the Blue Jays is the fact that how he responded after the three run home run by Ryan Flaherty. Yeah. Uh, just really settled in. Saw the nine pitches in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Little dribbler. Play by Navarro. Hardy is retired. One away. Bottom half of the eighth inning. And that's going to be it. John Gibbons is on his way out. So the veteran. Marco Estrada, 32 years old, longtime teammate of uh, Geraldo Parra of the Orioles when they were both with Milwaukee, will be coming out of the ball game. Tough one for a manager. You're trying to win a ball game. You got a pitcher out there who's pitched well enough, but you're going to pull him out, and in doing so, he will not have a chance to be the winning pitcher in the ball game.
tonight to the season. Well, very similar. Not much of a change at all. Why not stick with the game plan that's worked for him all year long? Career high 13 wins. So seven and a third strong innings, scattering only the four hits. Three earned runs, three runs shot by Flaherty, but only one walk, two punch ups. So uh, pounding the ball in the zone and getting some early contact. And he leaves the game, moves away to the Blue Jays bullpen. See Dane Johnson over there talking about the delivery. Brett Cecil now on the bump for the Blue Jays. 54% fastballs. Good heater. 90 to 95 miles an hour with the fastball. Of course known for that monster curve 39% of the time. Also has a change to go along with it. Another strong year for Cecil. Four wins out of the bullpen. Also picked up five saves at one point uh, we're considering him as the closer. Opponents hitting just 204 overall. And you see a pretty even distribution with ground ball outs and fly ball outs. He's been on a nice roll here. Hasn't allowed an earned run over his last 29 and a third innings of work. So with one away here in the eighth inning, Para will face him. 0 for 3, all fly ball outs. Has not faced the left hander Cecil before, hitting only 180 against left handers this year. Donaldson will play in at third base. He shows bunt, tried to drag it, fouls it off for a strike. Pyro will be followed by Manny Machado, and we are in a matchup game now with these. Pitcher loaded bullpens. Former closer for the Terrapins. Out of Dunkirk, Maryland. 0 1 delivery on the way by Cecil over the top, and that is going to be in there for a strike. Always known for that uh, great breaking ball. Loves to spin it. Always had his, has in his career. Toronto picked him up first round supplemental pick in 07 38th overall. 0 2 delivery. Put that one outside trying to get power to go and he would not and one ball two strike count. Four runs uh, three runs on eight hits for the Jays three runs just four hits for the Orioles. Cecil with a one two delivery power and a swing and a miss. A pretty nasty breaking ball right there. And if you lose that front side, lowers your chances. You see the front hip go for Para, opening up that uh, slot down and away. Great finish on the curveball from Cecil. Two down, Manny Machado. One for seven off Cecil. Machado's had an 0 for three. Two pop ups and one ground ball out. Two down bases are empty here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a chopper foul. Red Sox have jumped ahead of the Yankees four to one. Travis Shaw three for three, two RBIs. Jackie Bradley Jr.'s one for two, two RBIs. Nova got tagged. Yvonne Nova, the Yankees starter, four runs, seven hits over seven. Rodo Rodriguez, the former Oriole, has given up a run on seven hits over six. Magic number, of course, Toronto at four to clinch the division. If they should win and the Yankees lose, it would cut it to two for John Gibbons' ball club. A one delivery started, stopped. Two seam Throwing down. Fastball. Yeah, two seam fastball. Cecil features locating it well on the outside corner. Got Machado to bite on the first one, but they're holding up. Starts on that outer third and works off the plate. That one just slipped away, stayed way up high, and a two ball one strike count on Machado. Estrada retired the final 12 batters that he faced. And now 13 in a row have been retired. Pitch will be a little bit up high. So Manny's going to get the count in his favor. Three ball, one strike count, tie game at three. And with the crusher waiting in the wings. Manny, uh, an opportunity here. Nice hitters count. 
been in command of his strike zone all year long. And a swing and a miss. Foul tip, says Joe West. Off speed again. Last Oriole on Weeders a single fourth inning. And the 3 2 delivery on the way, and he'll pull that one foul. Came in on him. You see how comfortable he is throwing that breaking ball. There's a 3 1, 3 2. Again, 3 2, seventh pitch of the at bat. Machado to short. Goings. And the Orioles are retired. So 14 in a row have been set down by Estrada and Cecil. Ball game tied at three. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com and by PNC for the achiever in you. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick, 3 3 ball game, first of four. The Orioles and Toronto. And uh, we go to the bullpen. Now Brad Brock now in out of the O's bullpen. The fastball 62% of the time. It's been a great one as well. Crossbody delivery, mid 90s with the heater. The slider 12% of the time. And the turbo change 26% of the time. For Brad Brock, in, uh, 58 games this year. This will be 59. Five wins out of the O's bullpen. 2.36 earned run average. 87 punchouts leads the way for Orioles relievers and fifth in the American League, holding opponents to just a 194 overall batting average. Incredible year for Brad Brock has really been uh, a great bridge to O'Day and Britain and Buck Showalter. Not afraid to put him in any situation. Primarily high leverage. 29 year old right hander. Navarro leads it off and will take the pitch for a strike. He is 0 for 3 in the ball game. Navarro, Pilar, Goings due up 6 7 8. Remember Smoke with Powers batting in that number 9 spot where he pinch hit. Oh, one pitch on the way by Brock. Brock's done a good job against uh, the Jays on the year. There's Osuna. This will be outing number nine for Brock against Toronto. 11 and a third innings, five runs on uh, nine hits, 14 strikeouts, five walks against the Jays. A lot of innings worked against Toronto. One ball, two strike count. Good change up there to get ahead of the count. One and two on Navarro as the Orioles fell behind in the second on the Ancanacion home run. Clarity put him ahead on the bottom of the second on a three run homer. Nobody scored until the eighth inning. 
When Toronto picked up the two runs, RBIs, Revere and Bautista. Two runs, five hits, seven and a third, Tillman. One run, three hits, two thirds of an inning, O'Day. Just misses outside. Three and two. And Brad Brock certainly being careful here. Let me make the quality pitches. Navarro not biting on that outside corner. Got that one. Will it fall in? Yep. That's the only place he could hit that ball to that side of the field and get it in as he had Jonathan Scope way out there in right field. But he was able to plunk it down between power and scope, and the leadoff man's on. And the slider that he stays on and reaches out and finds some outfield grass. And Jonathan Scope uh, a little deeper with the shift. And places it perfectly in front of Parr. Dalton Pompey will come on as the pinch runner for Navarro. So Pompey's on the potential go ahead run. Leadoff man on ninth inning. Pilar coming up. The Orioles will play for a bunt. They bring Manny Machado in on the grass at third. Pilar's had a single one for three. He's got power. Throw over to try and get a sign. Pilar doesn't do anything at the plate except stand there. Manny Machado will. Stay in at third. Rocks delivery, and it'll be their first strike. No sign of a bunt right there. Pilar one for five off Brad Brock. He's got a six game hit streak extended with a base hit he got in this game. Good quick throw over. Pompey back to the bag. And a couple picks there, uh, obviously to keep Pompey close. You see uh, great success in his five attempts. Perfect. And also to see if Pilar is going to tip anything. No one delivery. Pilar's big cut. And Brock gets ahead of him two strikes. Two runner not going. That's going to be up the middle for a base hit. Turn will be made. Good play by Lowe to get it in a hurry. Stopping at second base, Pompey, but with nobody out here in the top of the ninth inning of a tie game, two on. Well, he stays on the changeup from Brock. Really too much of the plate, but impressive uh, piece of hitting right there. So the infield being set up. Weeders going through the signs for the infield. Toronto's two for three with runners in scoring position. There have been very few chances for either of these teams. Toronto's the number one average in the league with runners in scoring position as a team at 288. And Weeders will go out to have a word. Orioles again are going to play for a bunt by Goings. Goings is still looking over at the dugout here. See whether or not he's going to be asked to lay it or try to lay a sacrifice bunt down. Maybe a couple uh, reasons for that visit right there. Obviously, we'll be on the same page about pitch selection, but how about bunt responsibility? Well, Brad Brock has got to go. JJ Hardy slid way over in the 5 6 hole. Machado 15 feet in on the grass. Davis in tight as well. Leading sacrifice. Jay is at the plate. He's had six of them on the year. Not successful with that one as he fouls it off. Goings 0 for 4 off Brock. Change up, it looked like first pitch. He was reaching for it. Good position using the legs and uh, bad head out in front, but too much movement in that first offering from Brock. Chris Davis is in at third. Machado playing at the 45 degree angle. He'll go back and cover third if somebody else can make a play to him. Again, butting. It's a good one. 
Quick throw, scope over to cover. Seventh sacrifice of the year for Goings. And it will put two in scoring position with one away. Places it out there perfectly. In the position where Weeder is coming out of the gate. And we've seen him make a nice play going to third base in this same type of situation, but Goins gets it out a little too far. But Weeders has to take the out at first base. Goins a successful sack. Two Blue Jays in scoring position. That'll bring the Orioles infield in tight. Smoke. Pinch hitting. Eighth inning. Little number back to the catcher. We'll file that one away. He is a 319 hitter with runners in scoring position this season. He has gone 0 for 3 in the only at bats he's had against Brad Brock. Pompey at third base for Navarro who had the single. Pilar's on at second. Infield in. 0 1 delivery on the way and a little roller. Runners coming. Davis got to go to the plate. Throws it away. Another run coming. Here's the play at the plate. Weeders diving and the runner is out. Throw down to second. Bounces off the mound. Mercy. A run is in as Pompey took off on that roller. Pilar came around after Davis threw it to the backstop, but he threw it so hard it hit that brick wall and came right back to Weeders, who dove and got the out. Check out the read by Pompey going on contact. Weeders pointing to first, get the out, get the out. And Davis had already committed, but a great play here by Weeders, recognizing the runner and then tries to get the out on smoke at second base. But what an effort here! Take a look at Matt Weeders diving, grab back across. How about Pilar's effort? Wow. They may challenge this on the play at the plate as to whether or not he ever touched him. It's his best Superman. We'll try to avoid that tag. So one run is in. It is a 4-3 Toronto lead. So now the question is, is there another run in? Matt Waiters with that great dive. Brock had no chance to get back to the plate. He'd gone over to help cover first after Davis had charged in and made the throw. The RBI will go to smoke. He goes down to second. And the challenge is on the call at the plate. So even with the infield and uh, Blue Jays playing some aggressive baseball going on contact right there. Relying on the speed of Pompey. Sneak that run across the plate. And then Pilar. That's what the Blue Jays have been about all year long. Aggressive baseball. Sacrificing his body for that uh, second run to go ahead. Hard to tell from that angle whether he ever touched it. Yeah, Pilar saying he beat him. Of course, Weeder's going to say he got him. Well, whatever happens, Toronto's got a lead. And Smoke, in his second at bat in the ballgame, picks up what, at least for the moment, is going to be the go ahead RBI, his 57th run batted in of the year. As they check the angles in New York. Yeah, if they do uh, keep this second out on the board, Orioles catch a break there with the kick off the bricks. Davis's throw. Still, uh, and the play is an out. A strange one at the plate. There is Pilar who thought he had made it in. Of course, Pilar was on second base when all that stuff started happening. So he read the air and throw and decided to take an aggressive chance right there. After further review, he's still out. So now at second base is Smoke and Revere, the leadoff batter. He's had a base hit at an RBI. Brock's pitch will be taken away. So a run in here in the top of the ninth inning. 
1 0 count, 2 down, and we're going to have a delay here for a minute. There's the Joe West stare. Did you see it? Yep. <laughs> he was staring him down. Somebody on the field. Didn't get very far. And Buck obviously doesn't like to see that. Orioles fans, uh, at least Orioles. Myself included, think they're uh, some of the best in the business. Sometimes uh, this takes one to give a community a bad rap. Unfortunate. So Brock will wait. One zero count. There are two down. Revere right to short. Called in by Hardy. And that will do it. But here in the ninth inning, a run in, two hits, one left on, and the Orioles are down by one. Bottom half of the ninth inning, Russell Martin will come on to do the catching. Navarro picked up that big hit and then was pinch run for, and Pompey scored, which has given Toronto the lead. The Orioles have the middle of the order. Davis, Pierce, and Clevenger do up. Red Cecil will stay on. He is the pitcher of record, having come on to get the final two outs in the eighth inning. Orioles have three runs but only four hits and the home run by Flaherty in the second inning the only RBIs I see Davis's numbers uh, seventh inning or later this guy has been money coming up with the clutch home runs down and away to him. Chris is two for 16 off Brett Cecil. No two delivery on the way and a swing and a miss. That didn't take long. Cecil's got two K's. Well, three nasty breaking balls. All three quality pitches. First one, the best one. It stayed on the plate. The next two just kept biting harder and harder down and away. And uh, John Gibbons does not want Steve Pierce. The right hander to face the left hander. So Brett Cecil's coming out of the ball game and Osuna 
will come on with one away here in the night. Toronto leading at 4 3. Roberto soon only 20 years old, the youngest pitcher in Blue Jays history. Take a look at his pitch arsenal. The fastball, real good, 72%, 93 to 98 with the heater. As a slider, he's 13% of the time. And the changeup as well. You see 19 saves in 21 opportunities, 65 games he's appeared in this year. Pretty impressive uh, running him out there. Opponents hitting just 189. He's a fly ball pitcher, 64% of his outs in the air. Giving up seven home runs this year. Four of those this month. So, Orioles looking for a mistake. Pierce will come out for a pinch hitter as Paredes will stand in against the right hander. With one down here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Osuna's eighth outing against the Orioles. Two runs, six hits, seven innings this year. He has walked none, struck out nine against the O's. And the pitch to Paredes will be taken up high for a ball. So the Orioles trying to get it back here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Paredes 0 for 1 off Osuna. 1 0 delivery to him. Paredes on that big cut. Paredes at bats have been severely limited here in the second half of the season. He did not play well defensively and has not had starts as a position player, and thus the at bats have been severely cut. One ball, one strike delivery, and a swing and a miss on one up high. It's an easy cheese up at the top of the zone. Mid 90s there. Last year pitched a high A for the Blue Jays. One ball, two strike count with one away. Paredes looking just to get on here. And he's gone. How's that for command? Paredes showing that he's going to chase the top of the zone. All four fastballs up and out of the zone there with 96. So two down. Toronto had the original lead of one nothing. Will they have a final lead of four three. Clevenger is 0 for three. Steve's got power. And it is taken for a strike. Clevenger is 0 for one against Osuna. Osuna with a 19 out of. 21 in saves. 0 one. This could be a big night for Toronto. Red Sox still lead the Yankees in the ninth inning, five to one. Toronto win, Yankees loss, magic number to clinch the division title will be two, and it could happen as early as tomorrow night. 0-2 count.
Pitch on the way. Ball in the air to left field. Revere going over, and this ball game is over. So a one, two, three, ninth inning will make a winner out of Brett Cecil. O'Day will take the loss, and Osuna will pick up the save. And Toronto will go to the clubhouse and watch the rest of the Boston Yankee game to see how close they are to a division title. Game two tomorrow, Miguel Gonzalez takes the mound against Marcus Stroman. Our coverage on Mass and 2, 630 O's Extra, presented by Southwest, followed by game coverage at 7. This has been a massive presentation. O's Extra, presented by PNC, is coming up. Jim and Rick standing by. The Orioles get out of that scoreless inning streak, but not enough to put a ball game away. For Mike Mordick and all of our crew here at Camden Yards, I'm Gary Thorne. Your final in this one, one-run ball game. Toronto wins it 4-3. Adieu.